Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to be learning how to take Cornell notes and how to find the greatest common factor. Now in case you forgot, a factor is a number that divides into another number exactly without leaving a remainder. So for example, if we're thinking about the factors of 12, we need to think about numbers we can divide 12 by and not get a remainder. Another way to think about this is, what numbers can be multiplied together to make 12? Well, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 4 times 3. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So now that we remember what a factor is, today we're going to watch this video and learn how to make our Cornell notes. Now remember, Cornell notes originated from Cornell University, and it's a great way to take notes because it encourages us to read our notes multiple times, and this helps us learn. Cornell notes have a special template. On the top, I wrote the topic for the video we are going to watch, which is greatest common factor, or the GCF for short. I divided up my page, and the bigger section is where we're going to write the key ideas from the video. We will worry about the side and the summary section after we write our key ideas from the video. So let's get started on learning more about the greatest common factor. LOL, AKA, ASAP, TTYL, OMG, YOLO! And last but not least, GCF. Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to add another acronym to the list, GCF, or Greatest Common Factor. Alright, today is all about the Greatest Common Factor, or more commonly known as the GCF. So first, let's talk about what is the Greatest Common Factor, and it's pretty simple. If you just look at the name, uh, the Greatest Common Factor is just the greatest of the common factors between two or more numbers. That's all it is. You find the common factors and then whichever one's the greatest, that's your GCF. Let's try an example. In his video, he provided us with a keyword and its definition. The greatest common factor is the greatest of the common factors between two or more numbers. Now, we do not have to write the definition in the exact same way that he did. If we take the time to reword this definition, we are processing information and helping our brains learn this new information. So instead of writing the greatest common factor between two or more numbers, let's reword this as the biggest factor that two or more numbers share. Let's try an example. There's a couple ways we can find the GCF. The first one we're going to go over is by listing factors. So I'm going to find the GCF of 24 and 40. First, I'm going to list the factors of each of those numbers. So 24, I'm going to go through my factor pairs. So first, I always start with 1 and 24. It's an even number, so I know 2 works. 2 times 12 is 24. I know 3 works. 3 times 8 is 24. Also 4 times 6. No 5, and then I'm back to 6. So those are my factors for 24. I'm going to rewrite them in order down here. So for 24, my factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Okay. Next, I'm going to list my factors of 40. I'll do it in blue. Let's see. So same thing. For 40, always start with 1. 1 and 40. Uh, it's also even, so 2 is going to work. 2 times 20. 3 is not a factor of 40, so I'll skip that. 4 is. 4 times 10. 5 is, because it ends in a 0, so I know 5 works. 5 times 8 is 40. 6, no. 7, no. We're back to 8, so we're done there. I'm going to do the same thing and list my factors down here. So 40. In order, 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 
20 and 40. Those are my factors for 40. Now, I've got my factors. Now, as the name says, GCF, greatest common factor. Common means it's the same in both numbers. It's a factor for both 24 and 40. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to circle my common factors. Well, 1 is common. They're in both. Same with 2. Same with 4. 3, no. 5, no. 6, no. 8, yes. 10, no. 12, no. 20, 24, 40. So those are all my common factors. 1, 2, 4, and 8. And then all you got to ask is, well, which one is the greatest of the common factors? And obviously, 8 is the greatest. So my final answer, the greatest common factor of 24 and 40 is 8. GCF equals 8. Okay. Let's find the GCF using another strategy. So when we're writing our notes in math, it's always great to include examples. And he just went over an example with us. We could add these to our notes. Now. Should I just copy everything he wrote on the board into my notes and leave it like that? Hmm, if we did, we wouldn't be processing the information. So we could add little notes to help remind us or tell us the steps that he did to help find the GCF of 24 and 40. So let's ask ourselves, what did he do first? Step one, find factors of both numbers. Okay, great, then what? list and identify factors that are in common. And then lastly, he found the greatest factor. With these little notes, if we can't remember what the example was trying to show us when we look at these again, we have our little notes here to remind us. And again, we're making our brains work by processing the information. Equals eight, okay. Let's find the GCF using another strategy. For example two, we're going to find the GCF by prime factorization. So we're going to do the same exact problem and just solve it a different way. Find the GCF of 24 and 40, we're going to use prime factorization. So first I'm going to use a factor tree and figure out what the prime factorization is of both numbers. If you want to pause it and try to do it on your own, go for it. So for 24, I've got lots of options of where to start. Uh, it's always easy to start with 2 when you have even numbers, so I'm going to do that. 2 times 12, that's prime, so I'm done with that. Uh, 2 times 6, done. 2 times 3, done and done. So my prime factorization of 24 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. I'm going to leave it expanded like this instead of writing 2 cubed, uh, and you'll see why in a second. Next, let's do prime factorization of 40. 40, I'm going to start with 2 again. 2 times 20 is 40. That's prime. 2 times 10 is 20. There's a prime. And then finally, 2 times 5 is 10. And those are both prime. So my prime factorization of 40 is 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So I have my prime factorization of 24 and 40 done. Now all I need to look uh, at is see what prime numbers are in common for both of the prime factorizations. So you can see they both have a 2. They both have another two, and then they both have a third two. So all we have to do to find the GCF now is multiply. So they've got one, two, three twos in common. So two times two is four times two is eight. So again, the GCF of 24 and 40 is eight. Okay, here's some to try on your own. Notice in the video, he mentioned we can find the prime factorization in many ways. So in his example, when he did 24 and broke it down to 2 and 12, we could have broken it down using two other numbers that multiply to 24. 
For example, 3 and 8. So let's try that in our notes. 3 is a prime number, so we can circle that. Then 8 is 2 times 4, and 2 is a prime number, and 4 is 2 times 2, and both of these are prime. So notice that we get the same prime factors at the end, 2, 2, 2, and 3. Now, pause the video, and why don't you try to do the prime factorization of 40 with the factors of 4 and 10. Hopefully you got 4 can be 2 times 2, which are prime factors, then 10 is 5 times 2, which are also both prime factors, so the prime factorization of 40 is 2, 2, 2, and 5. Great! So we got the same answer, but in a different way. So we have our example. Now let's work on those little notes on the side. Well, first, we found the prime factorization of both numbers. Then, we looked for common prime factors. And lastly, we multiplied the common factors to find the GCF. All right, so we did it. We did the key points from that video. So now the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our key notes or our main ideas, and we're gonna try to develop questions. So we're gonna imagine that this, for example, here was going to become a question. It says the greatest common factor, the biggest factor that two or more numbers share. So if your teacher was going to ask you a question, and wanted you to answer that, what could the question be? So remember, question words are like who, what, where, when, and why. So for this one, we could say, what is the GCF? Or what is the greatest common factor? So now let's take a look at that first example we did, which was right here. And if we looked at all of this work here, what kind of test question could your teacher have asked you about this? So there are many answers for this. Um, again, question words, who, what, where, when, and why. If we looked at that, it could be, you know, what is the greatest common factor of 24 and 40 by listing the factors? Or we can even ask the question, how can we find the GCF of two numbers by listing the factors? And then in this last example, again, we can look at this information and create questions. Um, so here we can do, um, how can you find the GCF of two numbers by using prime factorization? You could also ask, what is prime factorization? Because in this example, we're using the process of prime factorization. So those are two questions that we could ask from this example. So when you're writing your questions or those cues on that shorter side, all of those questions should be on this side of your page. Just for the sake of this video, I did put um, those questions that we came up with here on the side just so that there was space. But when we're actually doing our Cornell notes, we want to have those questions here on this side of the page. So for now, we're going to stop here with our Cornell notes because we've taken those notes, we watched the video, we processed the information some more, by creating those questions. And we now already just looked at our notes twice. So that's two times that we've reviewed our notes. So for now we're gonna stop, and then later we can reread our notes and create the essential question, and then that's another time we've read our notes, and then we can go back again and look at our notes another time later, and then we can create a summary, and that's another time that we're gonna look at our notes.